Hello guys, thanks for tuning in. This time I will talk about hair follicles, which are hair constraints which help you link or parent objects to another after deforming them. So, to show you what I... So to show you how it works, I first have to model something so you can get a better understanding of how the hair follicles work. So first of all, I just create a simple um, cylinder and if the modeling process is a bit too fast for you and you don't know which buttons I'm pushing, I created a previous tutorial about um, speeding up modeling workflows and this will capture or the tutorial will capture a lot of the tricks I'm using now. So be sure to check them out before you check out this tutorial. So I just created the I want you to create a snake if you didn't get it before. And it should be just a simple way to show you how the hair follicles are working. It's nothing special. Uh, this is the soft modification tool, I think. Oh no, soft selection tool. So just to create some tapering effect for the snake. Something like this. Should be nothing special, just a simple body. And in the top view, I display my x-ray mode, go to the skeleton mode, join tool, and I create some quick bones for the body of the snake, which are these, and for the joints I create a um, spline IK handle tool from this joint to the last one, and I hide this and I also hide the joints and now I want to create the skin binding so I select the body and my joints okay first of all I have to bind the skin to the bone so I select my skin body and I select the joints and then I go into um, skinning bind skin smooth skin bind and now if I select I quickly add the body and to a display layer to create a reference so I cannot select it. So I can just only select the curve which is created using the spline IK handle and then to control vertex. I should now be able to deform the snake as you can see it's working pretty nice. I just want to rebuild the curve so I get more vertices on the spline itself. So you select that, go into the edit curves and rebuild and then just not 4 and just say something like 10 rebuild and now you get more control points for your um, curve so if you want to create a, a a more defined shape you just increase the number you can also use the soft selection tool to move it a bit more evenly or smooth so this should be my snake can also tilt up the head something like this nothing too special so now if you want to link objects to your snake let's say this is a more like a snake pet and it has a, a basket on its body you quickly create a, a cube and make it more defined and let's say I place it on top of here and extrude it scale it and put it back down again. So now I want to make this quickly hollow. Uh, something like this. So this looks 
nothing special, just whatever this is image for. But now if, if I want to, or if I'm transforming the snake, I would like that this object moves exactly the same as the snake body does. So now it's still rigid, but I want to constrain it to that. So you could create a cluster and link it to the cluster, but the cluster isn't on the on the surface of your object, it's more or less like on the on the center of your object, which you don't always want to have. So now we would go in and create some hair fold or like a hair system for the snake. So you would select your snake. If you just want to create one follicle, you go into the hair menu. Um, where is it here? Yeah. And the hair option box, you would just choose to use one uh, for the V count. And then you just create hair and then oh now it's positioned here. It's not the perfect position, so I'll show you how you uh, move the position where you exactly want it. You can delete the rest except the hair follicle, so just move that on top and select the rest and hit delete. So now you just only have this red red line there or red point. Now if you want to position it on this uh, UV you have to go into the UV text editor mode or editor whatever and then you can see the position of your, vert, uh, your UV so you select your UV and you get the exact position which is this one and in the hair follicle node you can move that object Now you see the parameters are five and oh, 0 0.5 and 0 0.5, but you want these parameters, so you just would type in um, five three eight and six two five. Now it should be placed on the top of my snake. You see it's nicely positioned on top here. So if I now show my basket, I can parent it, or first of all I. I snap my pivot to this point, D and V, press together, and then middle mouse click on the vertex or pivot or, or fall, hair follicle. So now I want to parent it. So I first select the follicle and the cube afterwards, and then I go into the constraint menu and hit parent. So now my cube has the same position as the follicle, and if I now um, if I now select the curve and go into the control vertex mode, the box should move exactly with it. As you can see, it's doing it perfectly. Even some rotations work nice. If I move it up, it goes with, which is really nice for um, animations where you use deformers. And if the snake moves or the um, the, the, the joints move. Um, not sure why it's not working. Then you can see it's going nicely, always l um, locked to the snake's body. And you can use that for a lot of features for anything which I just told you about. about um, and you could use that for anything which uses deformations. For example, if you have a you have a chubby guy and you want to constrain something to his belly which is jiggly and all fatty, <laughs> you can just create a hair follicle and place it exactly where you want it and then link objects to it or whatever. It's really a nice way of working. Or oh, I like that a lot. Okay guys, that's it about hair follicles and thank you for watching and please check out my website for interesting news or blog articles and be sure to check out my Vimeo channel for other tutorials and see you till the next tutorial. Bye!